Hi, we're at Cinec 2018 in Munich and I'm here with Jay Margolis of Infinity. Um, now, Jay, you've come from a scientific background of lenses for microscopes and you've discovered a whole new market with the cinematography trade. It happened by accident. One of the most famous photographers, or cinematographers I should say, in Brazil, Roberto Laguna Ditlev, contacted me and said, you know, Jay, I bought this as a microscope, but I started using this to do my commercial photography and cinematography. And guess what? You've really got a cinematography lens on your hands, not just a microscope. So I said, well, that's interesting. Can you show me something? So he set this up and he, he, he gave us a presentation. This is from him. And he started to tell us that uh, the uh, actual uh, depth of field and the other aspects of this were perfect for commercial photography. Right. So. And cinematography. And so with that, I said to him, you know, you're using the wrong lens, actually. As much as you like this, it's the microscope, oh, you got a lens it's you the microscope yeah. objective. It's, it's not set for distance. Yeah. It's set for working from one meter into 18 millimeters. So I set, set in motion to make this adapted to cinematography. And so I came up with this series of additional lenses for it. This is the macro lens that was the original for it. Yeah. The micro that he used actually to do this work. And then I made a similar lens in, in focal length to the micro, but set for one meter to infinity. And then another one that is equivalent to a 50 millimeter lens on a normal camera and another one that is a 29 millimeter. This is new, this is only about three weeks old. However, it made it in time for this lens to be used right. with the Apple presentation of the iPhone and the watch. And the whole total presentation were about, now 10 million people have seen the Apple presentation right. was taken with this combination of lens over here on the, the Busto. This is the exact combination used to take that particular um, Apple, Apple Serum, a, the whole Apple uh, event was taken with this configuration. Right. So if you see the iPhone... For all the like, presentation on screen. Like yes, that. all the iPhone presentation, yeah. all the iWatch, or the watch presentation photos were taken with this combination. Right. And they're razor sharp because this has exactly a perfect setting where the aperture and the size of the lens is essentially as perfect as the lens itself would deliver. Which from micro, micro Yes, it's, no, it's yeah. known as the Nelson point, after E.M. Nelson, who was actually the British Abbey, pretty much. And uh, actually lived in a place very much like Downton Abbey, <laughs> if you look him up. Uh, and he had nothing else better to do all day than check out microscopes. And he came up with the concept of the Nelson point, which is the best possible solution to what the optic should do. Well now, if you want to be creative, you can then open it up and blur things. Right. So we have that taken care of with this. So it's almost like an ideal solution for cinematography. However, another factor is that it keeps everything in focus from about one meter to infinity. The depth of field of the lens is incredible. Yeah. And then uh, it also can be used for right angle, as you see over here or for uh, additional uh, uh, uses in macro. The, everyone who gets one of these has to choose between a certain lens as the primary lens. Okay. They get the macro attachment automatically. Now, when they do, we have two models, basically, to choose from for cinematography. It started out being this model, which is the micro model, yep. which is a non-aspheric system sure inside. It's, it's a non-aspheric yeah. system inside. But then, in developing this for cinematography purposes, I made it so that it is an aspheric system. Right, yeah. With the ability to uh, take on different lenses on the front, and also to even interchange over here, so that you can put on even microscope adapters, and snorkel lenses and everything else okay, on the front. Yeah. So it's covering almost every basis of yeah. photography that cinematographers will be Fantastic, called yeah. upon. Uh, but this is a whole new market for you, isn't it? So it's a, a different um, different mindset to the, the scientific background that you've exa come from. Exactly. Yeah. Now, 50 some odd years ago, I was at Bausch & Lomb in Rochester, New York. 
And I was on the project which was called the Bowplane Microscope, which was the last research microscope they produced before going out of the market. And I actually have some of the objective systems that they developed at that time, uh, which were actually handmade as prototypes. Well, part of the development of this project actually goes back to knowledge that was gained oh, at really? that point. Yes. And it incorporates certain aspects of, I have to say, the developments of Benford and Rosenberger and Ackland. Now, George Ackland was my mentor there. And I pretty much followed some of his suggestions in developing this system. It's been like 50 years of thought that goes behind this. It's impressive, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. And so, but, so how are cinematographers reacting to this lens? Well, as I say, uh, people like George, uh, like um, Stephen McGee, who did the Apple. Yeah. Uh, people like uh, Ron S Rob Stiff, who did the uh, cinematography of the aspect, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, forced perspective, it's called. Uh, and uh, Detlef himself, Roberto Laguna Detlef himself, and uh, others have really made tremendous uh, efforts to show this around. And their own work now is incorporating it. In fact, Roberto just wrote yesterday, he tried out the new SFX3 lens, which is the same as McGee used for the Apple presentation. And he says it's the perfect lens for perspective in cinematography oh, right, yeah. of, uh, yeah. of commercial and advertising work. That's fantastic. So that's where we are. And you've also got this new suffocator system. Can that's you tell right. Me? The suffocator is brand new in the sense that it takes everything I've just mentioned to a step of absolute registration of the image size. And we have the suffocator over here. What the suffocator can do is it can monitor the focus change and reciprocally set in motion the opposite of focusing effect without changing magnification as it does. So it actually fools people, if you may say, into thinking that the total is um, always kept in focus. So on a turntable, for example, where you have bottles, the bottles will come around and they will get slightly out of focus. The suffocator can monitor that focus, so it doesn't even right. seem like anything. And these, is, is suffocator on market now? It's the suffocator will be available to be delivered in about a month or two. We're just okay. getting ready to, to do that. Yeah. We put the patent through for suffocator literally two days before coming here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the application just went yeah. in. It's that yeah, yeah. new. Yeah. And we just made it to be able to show it here. We had to keep it hush-hush until that time. So uh, you can imagine that we were rushed to do it, but we finally got it done. Yeah. Now in the patent, it actually can show that it can be scaled down to be even put in cell phones. Yeah. So we can add this feature to almost any, any device. Yeah. It's, it's an immense application. It's fantastic. And all this has been an accident that we were put onto, that we actually had all this technology. We actually had the continuously focused microscope as such for about 15 years but we didn't even know the cinematography market was there waiting for us to enter. And once we found that out, uh, I said about uh, making some of the amendments to make it possible to enter the cinematography market. Well, the interest certainly seems to be here. You've got a lot of people swarming the stand, even straight from setup. So as soon as you had your, your table well, set well, up, well, people were around here. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, the response was such that at Cinegear, uh, we were awarded uh, second place to Zeiss, uh, and we really came out from nowhere because no one had ever heard of our lenses before. And so it's kind of strange that you know we came in second yeah. to Zeiss at this other show. That's fantastic. I guess the next challenge will be keeping up supply with demand, won't it? We hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we're, we're on our way with this, and the, uh, I can actually say that, in my opinion, anyway. If cinematographers who do advertising and commercial in particular don't use this lens, they will be at a disadvantage to those who do. Because it, it does a, give them that extra edge of getting it close, getting it up the field, getting higher powers. For example, there's a very famous scene in Jurassic Park where they have eggs of dinosaurs, and then they pan out to uh, the actors, uh, Laura Dern and uh, Sam Neill. Now, that was done with another lens that had been previously developed, but it was only for that kind of purpose. It wasn't so versatile. 
This one, you actually could, could remake that scene. Now, I'm not going to tell the, the director how to do things, but I'm saying what he possibly could do with the new technology. Imagine zeroing in on that egg and seeing at 16 power markings on the egg that look alien to, to infer that something about the dinosaurs was otherworldly and then pull back and still do that scene with the, with the people. That's possible with this lens and no other. Well, it's exciting times for Infinity. Best of luck with it all. I hope the show is very successful for you. And we'll catch up with you some other shows, I'm right. sure. Very Thank good. You very Thank you very much.